morning. We're talking about the secret to influencing people, your colleagues, your children, and more. And look who's back. Maria's uh -huh. got that story. This is something we all should be interested in because today it seems like we live in a culture of disagreement. Us versus them. I'm right, you're wrong. So how can we come together to agree more? A top neuroscientist says the key to influencing others starts in our brains. She showed us the best strategies to use to get others on your side. This woman doesn't know it, but she's about to be influenced. Here we can see quite a bit. And MIT visiting neuroscientist Tali Sharat says the reason why lies in her brain. If you're influencing me, you're influencing my brain. In her new book, The Influential Mind, Sharat says our brains are actually hardwired to respond well to some influencing strategies and shut off to others. But in our divisive world, we often use the wrong approach to get agreement. We will go in and say, you're wrong and I'm right. And here are all the facts and figures and reasons why I'm right. Now take the campaign of Donald Trump. Sharat says unlike his rivals, he used the number one influencing strategy. Focus on emotions, not facts. I was watching the second Republican debate, and the debate turned to the link between autism and vaccines. And on one side was Dr. Ben Carson, and he was saying, listen, there's no link between the two. There have been numerous studies, and they have not demonstrated uh, that there's any correlation. And Donald Trump, on the other side, was telling a story of a baby that he knew. Two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. People could identify more with a story than with the facts and figures. Right. Facts and figures are necessary and important to uncover the truth, but they're not enough to convince people of that truth. She says in a heated debate, influencing strategy number two also works. Start with what you have in common. To show its powerful impact on the brain, Sharrett had two students take part in a demonstration. First, each was shown photos of homes and asked to guess their prices. Then they bet money on how accurate they thought their answers were. Next, Sharrett brought them to her brain lab, where she scanned their brains while giving them feedback about their answers. When they were told others agreed with them, their brains lit up, causing them to be more receptive. But when others disagreed with them, their brains froze, turning off to others' points of view. When we're having an argument, we can perhaps remember that that person's brain is shutting down and that if we're saying something positive, looking to find common ground, the, per the person's brain is actually going to light up and let it land. Yeah, start with what we have in common and go from there. She says the next influencing strategy is effective with teens. Number three use positive rewards instead of fear. Teenagers don't respond to fear-based tactics. The reaction tends to be, it's not gonna happen to me. And that's a reaction for, from a lot, of, a lot of people. What worked with teenagers? You might say, instead of saying, if you smoke, you will get cancer, highlighting the negative, you might say, if you don't smoke, you're more likely to get on the basketball team. Highlighting the reward, how things can get better, is actually a better strategy to get people to act. She also said when trying to change people's minds, what we say first and how we say it, i.e. our tone, goes a long way to shape how they'll actually react. So mm. I thought this was interesting on so many levels. Mm. Yeah, that idea that start with something we have in common so the brain doesn't shut down. And also with kids, the positive, I think we all kind of naturally go to, this is going to happen yeah. if you don't get your homework done. Yeah, this is right. what's going to happen instead of using a completely different tactic. Yeah. Right. What do you have tomorrow? Uh, something really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> she can only remember it. <laughs> I can remember it. It's a fascinating story. It's a new book about a woman who had a brain aneurysm and then learned how to train her brain all over again. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you caught me. <laughs> Thank you.